So there's this blog post that has blown up a bit in the past week, especially in the Linux nerd tech space, called Booting Linux Off of Google Drive, which is about, as you may have guessed, booting Linux, specifically Arch Linux, by the way, from a Google Cloud Drive instead of just booting it from local storage, as we become so accustomed to. Now, even though this is seen by many people as a new, super cool innovation, in a way, this is really just a return to the very early style of computers, way back in the day before the personal computer. You see, computing used to be done via terminals that were connected to a mainframe. And just like the software terminals that we use today, those hardware terminals could be used for editing text and running programs, but the programs and the text files were not actually stored on the terminal. They were stored on the mainframe, and that's also where the programs would be run. The mainframe really did all of the heavy lifting, and the terminal was basically like a computer monitor and keyboard. Now, obviously, this booting from Google Drive isn't an exact parallel to the terminals of the past because the laptop that was used to boot from Google Drive still had RAM, it still had a capable CPU and other components that allow it to do more than just display ASCII text. Now, full disclaimer, the way that this person did their boot from Google Drive is really not considered a true boot by most people because the user who wrote this blog post and did the boot is still using a Linux kernel in at RAM FS locally on the laptop in order to run Fuse, which is what's really being used to mount the real Linux file system from Google Drive. But nevertheless, this is still an interesting technical blog that I'm going to link in this video's description if you're interested in learning more or trying to create your own Arch Linux setup that boots from Google Drive. And to the broader tech industry, this is still a small step in the direction towards the thin client cloud computers that big tech companies like Google have been pushing on consumers for years now. For example, the cheaper Chromebooks come with very little onboard storage. Sometimes they'll have as little as 32 gigabytes of eMMC memory. This is enough for the Chrome OS and maybe for a few other programs and a lightweight indie game or two, but not really much else. So the idea with these Chromebooks, and really all Chromebooks, is that Google Drive is supposed to be your main storage drive, which is why Google gives you an additional 100 gigabytes of cloud storage for 12 months whenever you purchase a Chromebook and you activate that 100 gigabyte offer by signing into your Google account, and of course other terms and conditions apply. The appeal of these kinds of devices is that your files, your sensitive data, is always backed up in the cloud. You don't have to worry about breaking your laptop or somebody stealing it, not that anybody with a brain would want to steal a low-end Chromebook anyway, but you get the idea. Your data is always safe. Unless, of course, Google accidentally deletes all your files from the cloud, which is a thing that they've done before. But booting an operating system from the cloud opens up all kinds of new possibilities, both positive and negative. On the upside, your operating system can also always be safe, just like your data. If you break your Arch Linux installation, which is likely to happen if you run Pac-Man SYU after a long period of time, then you don't really have to worry about fixing your broken operating system. You can just boot from the last known good snapshot of the OS. 
And there's also the potential for advanced anti-malware capabilities within your OS. For example, with Microsoft Defender, the cloud-delivered protection that Microsoft has been offering for a few years now has really changed the malware game on Windows. Because now, all of the devices that are using this system get virus definition updates from every other Windows PC that ends up falling victim to malware. And things like ransomware wouldn't be much of a problem in this cloud computing paradigm because of the aforementioned snapshot system. Everything's already backed up, so it doesn't matter if all your files get encrypted, just restore to the last known good snapshot. That's a whole class of malware that's become quite common these days that can potentially be mitigated by this cloud computing system. And in theory, you never have to worry about running out of storage and getting your hard drive upgraded either because you can just pay for more space in the cloud. And because that puts more money in Google or Microsoft's pocket, this is something I bet you that they're going to go for in the coming years. Now, obviously, there's a lot of negative aspects to the cloud computing paradigm. Just like with the Chromebooks, you really can't call it your computer or your storage if everyone is in the cloud, which is really just some other guy's computer. And when you're booting your operating system from the cloud, this concept is taken to the next level because in addition to having your data stolen from you by Google, Microsoft, or whoever is in charge of the cloud storage system, they can literally prevent you from booting your computer. So even if your computer is just a glorified entertainment system for you to browse Reddit or YouTube and you really don't have any sensitive data that you're worried about losing, Big tech can just tell you, no, no computer for you today. Go outside and play. And this should go without saying, but there's absolutely no privacy with this kind of setup. Like, even if you do manage to get Lux encryption working with this, which is something that goes beyond the scope of this user's blog post, the moment you enter your decryption key for that Lux encryption, Google has access to the contents of everything in your boot drive. The cloud computing paradigm contains a lot of traps to get users to relinquish their freedom for the promise of extra safety and convenience. As is often the case with pretty much all technical innovations. But that being said, I'm not gonna vilify the person who wrote this blog post because they have shown yet another cool thing that you can do with Linux. Just because they use Google Drive doesn't mean that you can't use a more based cloud storage system that you have more control over, which would honestly mitigate a lot of the negative aspects of this cloud computing system that I mentioned in this video. But I can't help but wonder if the author of this blog had a kind of Oppenheimer moment where they realized that the work that they did in the pursuit of knowledge could be used and abused by big tech to further erode the concept of digital privacy in this cyberpunk dystopia. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and buy my merch on base.win to help support the channel where you can save 10% store-wide at checkout by paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.